grudge. It's the English translation of the Juon, which is the Japanese concept that spurred the entire series, and it's a vengeful spirit. When somebody dies in a fit of rage and their death is unjust and unresolved, then their spirit will remain in that place and terrorize the people. Nick Pesci, he's a very smart guy. Action! Start coming up. This is his own script and that helps. It helps a lot. He has a mission that is very, very clear to tell this story the best way possible. It was so interesting for me to make The Grudge right now because I ran into this great filmmaker, Nick Pesh, and I thought he'd be a great captain to take us forward in the next episode of The Grudge. Right off the bat, the first scene of the movie is riddled with nods to the old movies. I love working with Nick so far. I think he's fantastic. Mrs. Mathis. <laughs> With the help of the genre, we were telling a story that just is not being told in movies today. So it felt fresh and it felt like real life. These are everyday situations that have been transplanted into this horror film. You know, you have a woman who is a single mom. You have a man and a woman who are very much in love, a 50-year relationship, and the woman is suffering from dementia. <laughs> Oh yeah, the grudge is on me. I can, oh, I can feel it. I can shake it off. A grudge, it's a debt that gets owed. Something is wrong in the universe, and this thing won't rest until that debt's been paid. A thing called the grudge, it just drives them crazy to the point that the only way out is taking their own lives. Am are you alone in the house right now? I think fear is a fascinating subject, the horror genre in general. I think that's part of what's exciting about it is to enjoy the experience and then be able to go home and be freed of it. She wanted to kill me. We have some very original, interesting new ghosts in this film. The ghosts go through a real transition throughout the picture. They start out just kind of pale, creepy versions of themselves. It was so interesting to work on the different stages of makeup with the FX guys. Stage two takes, you know, a couple hours. We do an application of silicone on them so that uh, in a lot of like veining and modeling so that they're more deftly and they start showing their wounds. You know, when you mess with faces, it's particularly horrifying. I love it because at the end of it, I don't at all feel like myself. You better stop it with this shit. What's the matter with you? Just think about your family. As scary as the ghosts are, some of our goriest, most visceral, shocking moments, these things that these characters do to themselves, the most extreme and kind of show-stopping example of that is the death of Faith Matheson. That was a challenging scene, probably the most challenging, I think, in the picture for us, really. What we're trying to do as little VFX in this movie as possible, so it was a mix of Lin Shay actually stepping up to the stairs, then... Into a stunt double who's rigged into this staircase. And she was able to do 30 degrees of fall knowing that we were going to be in specific angles from far below and then a straight overhead. We developed a rig with this very, very durable duplicate body of Lin Shay. We threw that dummy down six flights of stairs. And uh, nails the ground and just paints the entire scene red. There's a jubilance and sort of a joy of the horror and the gore when it works. It's a really smart film. It is wonderful, classic, real horror. I believe your house is haunted. When the film's location moves stateside, you see a lot of number fours. It's plastered to every house's address and the time on the clocks. Why? Because in Japanese, four is pronounced like the word for death, a big no-no in Japanese culture, sort of like the number 13 in America. We follow our main character, Detective Muldoon, a single mom who works at a police station where the address, while it doesn't have any fours, is 666 upside down. She pays a visit to the notorious 44 Rayburn Drive and gets shaken pretty fast when she almost hits the young girl Melinda with her car. If you think this is similar to what you've seen in Juon the Grudge 2 and the Juon comic book, you're not too wrong. John Cho's character is cursed immediately when he enters. All it takes is one footstep across the threshold. Are you ready home? 
His role as a real estate agent is a wink to the real estate agents from the Japanese movies. And his ghostly scalp massage is literally a nod to Sarah Michelle Gellar's. 